The time is 9 a.m. I call to order the February 4th, 2021 meeting of the Contractors State Licensing Board. My name is David El Torre. I'm the CSLB Board Chair. Today, we will have a board meeting followed by enforcement and legislative committee me meetings. As we will be moving from the board meeting to committee meetings, we will have board members transitioning between meetings. Please note that only board members who are members of, of the standing committee may participate in that committee meeting. Other board me members who are in attendance may observe, but cannot ask questions or participate in the discussion. Board members, we will be using cameras during the meeting. To mitigate any potential bandwidth issues, we ask that you turn off your video camera when you are not speaking. When you would like to com comment during the meeting, please turn on your camera or select the raise your hand icon in the WebEx application. I will call on board members to speak. When called upon, please unmute yourself and when finished, return to mute and turn off your camera. Shelly Jones is our host and moderator today. This is the second time Shelly has moderated a CSLB board meeting. She has moderated several board meetings for other boards throughout DCA, and she did a great job monitoring our December meeting. Welcome, Shelly. Also, Joining us today is Registrar David Fote, Chief Deputy, Deputy Registrar Tanya Corcoran, CSLB staff, and our Board Legal Counsel, Jason Hurtado. Before we begin with our regular agenda items, I want to touch on the reopening of the CSLB public offices, which includes headquarters, Investigation Center Public Counters, and the seven testing centers. As you know, CSLB and other state agencies closed offices to the public beginning Monday, December 7th, pursuant to the governor's stay-at-home orders in response to the rise in COVID-19 cases. An intensive care unit availability, availability falling below 15%. The stay-at-home orders were recently lifted statewide and we reopened all our public offices and resumed testing this past Monday, February 1st. Exam applicants with the test date during the closure have been notified and their exams are being rescheduled. To reduce the backlog, a third testing session has been added to at many of the test centers and seating capacity expanded at the Sacramento and Norwalk test centers. With that said, Let's begin. Elise, please confirm board member attendance and roll call. David Delatori. Here. Kevin Albanese. Here. Frank Altamira. Here. Augie Beltran. Here. Ronnie Coppola. Here. Miguel Galarza. Here. Don Giratano. Here. Susan Granzella. Here. Diana Love. Diana. Here. Okay. Michael Mark. Here. Marlo Richardson. Here. Jimmy Wayne. Here. Johnny Simpson. Here. Nancy Springers. Here. Mary Tyker. Here. We have a quorum. Great. At this time, I ask that you join, that you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will begin with agenda item B which is for public comment and to request agenda items for future meetings. The board values public input as part of our consumer protection mission to allow us enough time to conduct our full schedule of business day today. I'm limiting public comments to three minutes apiece. If your comments don't involve any item on today's agenda, this would be the time where you can make them. 
If you have comments on one of our agenda items, we encourage you to wait until we get to that item. We will give you an opportunity to make your comments at that time. There are a few other rules that apply. First, California law prohibits board members from discussing any matter brought up during public comment. And board members are not allowed to act on any item not on today's agenda. Second, if you want the board to discuss a topic not on the agenda, you can ask us to consider placing that issue on an agenda of a future meeting. And finally, if you have an application, complaint, or disciplinary charges pending before the board, we ask that you not discuss the details of your case or pending complaint. That's because board members may be the judges and by law are not permitted to receive evidence or information that is not part of the administrative record in the case. Members of the public, if you are with us on WebEx and would like to make a comment, use the chat feature to send us, send the host a note that you would like to offer public comment. If you are joining us on the phone and would like to make a public comment, press star nine. We will take any WebEx comments first, followed by telephone comments. We will use the same system throughout the meeting for public comment during each agenda item. You will find instructions on how you can make public comments on the agenda for this meeting posted on the CSLB website. Board members, please, please turn on your camera and raise your hand if you have an agenda item you would like placed on future meeting agendas. Okay, seeing none. Shelly, are there any uh, public comments? We do have a request from Matt Stockton. Matt, your microphone is unmuted. You will have three minutes. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Chairman and Board members. Uh, I was coming today and uh, the Chairman already talked a little bit about the, uh, the test center issue. I've been waiting since the middle of December for our test date. So thank you for adding additional um, hour, additional class and stuff and expanding uh, test dates. Um, there's several of us, of uh, my friends included, that have started the application process with the CSLB back in August. So anything that could be done also to help speed up the process as we're on in a seven months now waiting for our applications to be processed would be great. Thank you. Any other comments, Shelly? Seeing none at this time. Um, David, do you mind if I just make a very brief comment? Sure. Uh, just to the gentleman who just called in, I'm going to give you my direct line um, and we can actually talk about scheduling you. My direct line is 916-255-3939. Um, and once this is over, I can put ring. Okay. So seeing no more comments, we will uh, we'll move on. Next is agenda item C, presentation of certificates of recognition. Today we are recognizing Missy Victory. CSLB Chief of Enforcement. Before I read the certificate, I wanted to note that Missy started with the state back in 1985 as a key data operator. She began her career with the CSLB 22 years ago. The positions Missy has held at the CSLB before her selection as Chief of Enforcement include Personnel Office Analyst, Administration Division Staff Service Manager, and enforcement program manager. Fortunately for CSLB, Missy put her personal administration and enforcement experience to good use when she was selected to lead the enforcement division three years ago. Missy is well respected by her staff, coworkers, and her dedication to CSLB is appreciated. I will now read the certificate of recognition. With sincere appreciation, for your more than 35 years of state service, including the past 22 years at CSLB and the last three as Chief of Enforcement. On behalf of the board, 
members and staff, thank you for your outstanding contributions toward consumer protection. You have shown outstanding professionalism and strong leadership during your time at CSLB. The Contractor State Licensing Board, California's construction industry, and California consumers, thank you for your efforts. We wish you all the best upon your retirement and with your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Uh, board members, any comments? Anybody care to make a comment? If not, shut up. It's on. <laughs> Dave, I, I'd be happy to. Sure. Yeah, just Missy, yeah. I've, I've really, really enjoyed working with you uh, over the past few years, both or most recently as your uh, role as Chief of Enforcement, and I wish you just absolutely nothing but the best. You've been awesome to work with. You've been a great advocate for uh, consumers uh, through the enforcement process, and just we're going to miss you, and thank you for all that you've done for, for, for us as a board, for me as a person, and for the consumers of California. Thank you, Kevin. Those are very nice words. Any other David, board comments? I would like to, David, Nancy. Yes, Nancy, proceed. Thank you. Missy uh, kind of did what Kevin said, but just wanted to point out that um, with my work on the board, you've always been very helpful whenever I had situations that pop up. You always did your homework, you did the research, very open to helping out, and um, that's the kind of person that we need that are there to listen and help and um, do a fantastic job. So thank you for all the work that you've done and wish you best luck and kind of jealous that you're getting there before me. <laughs> so take care. Thank you. Any other board comments? Yeah, this is Johnny. Johnny. I just, Missy, I just wanted to say thank you for everything you've uh, you've done for us. It's always been a pleasure to work with you, and wow, how cool to get to retirement. <laughs> Pretty neat. Uh, it's been just been a pleasure working with you, and, and just so knowledgeable and a lot of us, but but great. Enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Any other board members like to comment? Hi, Missy. It's Marlo. I just wanted to say thank you for everything. It's been a pleasure working with you and enjoy retirement. You're so lucky. It's a great time to do that. It is indeed. Any other board members have a comment? Susan. Yes. <laughs> Missy, I just wanted to say best of luck. Uh, I, I have enjoyed retirement, but I ended up here. Um, anyway, you made, you always made the logic of enforcement for CSLB clear to us who are new. And even those of us who've been on the board for a while, your methods and your conclusions and the deliveries always make sense. And I wish you the best. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Are there any other board members? See none, Missy. I didn't realize uh, when I first got on the board, but uh, you're 22 years uh, with the CSLB. Um, now that's dedication, and uh, we we truly appreciate your your dedication and your efforts um, to uh, the board and uh, consumer protection. Thank you. Thank you. I just like to say one thing. I want to thank Dave and Tanya for giving me this opportunity. And I also want to thank the employees of the enforcement division, whether it's the managers, the supervisors, the investigators, the CSRs, or the technicians. They're out there every day doing hard work that make the difference and make the enforcement division what it is today. And without their help, I couldn't have done it. So now I'm looking forward to the next chapter in my life, spending time with my children and grandchildren just making more happy memories, but I'm grateful to have the opportunity. Great. Uh, best of luck on your new endeavors, Missy. Thank you. Will do. Okay. So next, we move on to agenda item D. The board review of the draft responses to public comments received on our regulatory rulemaking package to make permanent the renewal fee increase enacted by emergency regulation. As some members may recall, at its September 2019 meeting, the board voted to amend the license renewal fee by regulation from $400 to 
to the maximum amount allowed by statute to $450. This included the increase of two other CSLB renewals to their maximums, the inactive license renewal from $200 to $225, and the home improvement salesperson registration from $83 to $95. The rulemaking process to make these renewal fee increases permanent is now in its final stages, which involves receiving public comments on the rulemaking. The board is required to respond to all comments it receives. The board received three public comments on the rulemaking, two in the form of emails on June 10th, 2020, and one in the form of a letter on September 28th, 2020. On pages 13 through 16 are the board's draft responses to the comments, followed by the public comments on pages 17 through 19 in your board packet. The staff recommendation on page 12 is that the board approve the responses as drafted to the public comments on the board's proposed rulemaking regarding Title 16, Division 8, Calif California Code of Regulations, Section 811, received on June 10th, 2020, and September 28th, 2020, and authorize staff to make any non substantive, substantive uh, changes to the board's responses for inclusion in the final statement of reasons. Before calling for a motion, I ask that whenever making a motion or second, that you state your last name followed by the motion. With that said, I will open it up for board discussion. Seeing or hearing none. Uh, Shall this, we, is, this is the moderator. Marlo Richardson has her hand up. Oh, let me see it. Marlo, do you have a comment? That was an old hand uh, when I was oh. trying to address <laughs> Missy. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chair, just, just yes. before we begin board discussion, I, I think we should entertain a motion, uh, I think, to approve the uh, staff recommendations regarding the responses to the public comments. Albany said so moved. Is so moved. Is there a second? Simpson says second. Okay. Moved and second. Uh, is there any board uh, comments? Shelly, any uh, public comment? Police, roll call, please. David Delatori? Aye. Kevin Albanese? Aye. Frank Altamira? Yes. Maggie Beltran? Aye. Ronnie Cobos? Aye. Miguel Galarza? Aye. Don Giratano? Aye. Susan Granzella? Aye. Diana Love? Aye. Michael Mark? Aye. Molo Richardson? Aye. Jim Wayne? Aye. Honey Simpson? Aye. Nancy Springer? Aye. Yes. May take her. Aye. Motion passes. Great. Thank Chairman you. Chairman Delatory, this is the moderator. We did have one uh, request for comp to pop in just as we began the roll call. Sure. Proceed. Okay. And this is from JP Tenor, I believe the last name is. I have unmuted your microphone. You'll have three minutes. Oh, there, there's some noise in the background. Okay. Um, I, uh, I I want to bring up the, uh, uh, the the unlicensed activity on the gig economy, and uh, basically there's um, Uber-like sites right now that um, no one has a license. Uh, the platform doesn't have a license. Uh, the um, the buyer or provider um, they don't all have uh, licenses. Um, and um, I want to address it before it goes. There's somebody talking in the background. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, it's uh, it, that is not on the agenda. It's yeah. Well, I I brought it up. Uh, uh, I brought it up in September, and uh, sites like Work Market they're putting um, cabling jobs, and uh, and I see some other sites too. 
Okay, and, uh, and I need it addressed. <laughs> so, uh, and we'll address that if um, um, I guess I could. Uh, David, do you care to comment? Can I? Yeah, this is Dave Folk on the star. What I'd like to do is have Justin Flores, who's joining, who's with us today, reach out and discuss these concerns. It would be something okay. that our enforcement division could absolutely look into. Yeah, I actually, uh, I actually reported it to the enforcement, and they say it's just referral services. Well, if that's the case, then anybody can, you know, like I, I have a low voltage contractor's license, and before I upgrade it to a uh, get the extra classification for electrical, uh, I want to uh, make sure that I can't just make a platform for for plumbers and uh, collect 10% off the top. And uh, uh, that's actually in the middle of a transaction. No other advertising agency. And they also do the accounting too, incidentally. So um, I, I, I caught a couple of things and like a $35,000 $35, job um, just for camera equipment at a dealership. And uh, no one had a license. And I reported it and I sent it up to the enforcement agent. They said, well, okay, that's just a referral service. Well, that doesn't stop the fact that the buyer and the provider don't have a license either. Well, <laughs> you can't be in the middle of a transaction. Yeah. Type of thing. We'll, we'll make the, go ahead, uh, Jess, do you care to comment or? Yes, Chair, thank you. And Mr. Fowl, thank you. Uh, sir, you may reach me directly. My name is Jesse Flores, I'm Deputy Chief of Enforcement. You can reach okay. me directly and I'll give you my phone number right now. My okay. phone number is area code 562-345-7671. Okay. That is my direct line. Please call me in. 7671. Uh, uh, seven, seven, correct. And okay. That's me, me directly, and we'll talk about this offline. All right. I'm done. Uh, thank, thank you for letting me uh, speak. Well, thank you for your comments. Okay. Um, where were we? Oh, okay. <laughs> Next. Uh, staff is seeking uh, authority from the board to seek a readoption of the emergency, emergency regulations if necessary. At its September 2019 meeting, in addition to authorizing staff to pursue permanently increasing renewal fees to the statutory uh, maximum as previously discussed, the board authorized staff to pursue emergency rulemaking regulations to implement fee increases more qu quickly. As emergency rulemakings expire, staff will need to request that its emergency rulemaking for these renewal fees be readopted by the Office of Administrative Law before June 8, 2021. If the permanent regulatory rulemaking is not completed by that date, staff, staff expect that the regular rulemaking will be completed before the emergency rulemaking expires in mid-June. However, this is a preventative measure should there be unexpected delays. On page 12 is the staff recommendation. The recommendation is the board authorized to seek readoption of the emergency regulations regarding Title 16, Division 8, California Code of Regulations, Section 811, on or before June 8, 2021, if needed. I'll entertain a motion. Simpson, motion to approve. Beltran, second. So it's been moved and second. Are there any comments from the board? I have one comment. Yes. I'm getting a lot of, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm getting a lot of static and it's really hard to hear anybody. Yes, this is the moderator. Um, unfortunately, I believe there's something uh, at Chair De La Torre's end that is whenever we speak, I believe it's feeding back into his system. So it could be a volume issue or if you if, it, if you're using your um, speaker on your computer, it could be a, a feedback through that as well. So turning down the volume or using a headset may help. Okay, I do apologize uh, to the public and to the board if you are receiving any uh, feedback from from my system. Um, there, there's been a uh, Augie. Did, did you hear the uh, motion? Yeah, I made the second on it. Okay. <laughs> so there's been a, a okay. Any uh, board comment? 
Any public comment? Seeing no public comment at this time. Elise, roll call, please. David Delatore? Aye. Kevin Albanese? Aye. Frank Altamira? Yes. Bill Tran? Aye. Ronnie Cobos? Aye. Miguel Galarza? Aye. Don Giotono? Aye. Susan Granzilla? Aye. Diana Love? Aye. Michael Mark? Yes. Mola Richardson? Aye. Jimmy Wayne? On the counter. Aye. Johnny Simpson? Aye. Nancy Springer? Yes. Mary Tacker? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, please. This concludes our board business for today. The enforcement committee was set to begin at 9.30 a.m. After we adjourn, we will have a short break to transition to the enforcement committee, committee meeting led by enforcement committee chair, Kevin Albanese. Uh, there being no further business to discuss, this meeting is adjourned.